Hi. In this lesson, we're going to have a look at uh, how the plate tectonic model applies to um, a particular location. And to do this, we need to apply um, the ideas that this guy, John Tuzo Wilson, uh, put together back in the 1960s. He was a Canadian geologist uh, who was working on uh, the oceans. And he realised that um, new plates, new oceanic crust, gets created at mid-ocean ridges and then destroyed again at subduction zones. So over the course of a couple of lessons, we need to look uh, at this model and how it applies in particular locations. Our first location uh, is to look at the island of Sumatra. Now, Sumatra is part of uh, Indonesia and is, if you like, I suppose, a development of some of the studies we've been doing um, about plate boundaries uh, at earlier stages of your geological education. Okay, you should have a handout that looks like this. It's a fairly simple sort of cartoon version of the plate tectonic model. We know from measurements that we can have plates moving uh, in different directions. Where the plates move apart, that's a divergent margin. Where they come together, that's a convergent margin. It's these two we're going to focus on first, in particular because that, that's where they create rocks. Now, we're going to start by looking at a convergent margin. Sumatra is a, a really interesting example of this and takes us a little step further than um, convergent margins we'll have looked at, for example, around the Pacific in the past. This is a satellite image of the island of Sumatra. Um, as I say, it's part of, uh, uh, of Indonesia. You can see the Malayan Peninsula uh, just to the north of it as well. Okay. Let's turn this into a geological map. So this is a simplified geological map of this area. You have this on your um, handout. We can see that we have um, two plates here. We've got the Indian and the Eurasian con uh, plates coming together. Indian plate is oceanic, Eurasian plate is continental. So where the two come together, we see a trench. If we just go back very quickly, to the satellite image, you can see the very dark blue band just to the uh, west of the islands that marks uh, the Sunda Trench. Okay, to the east of the Sunda Trench then, we have this big island of Sumatra, um, mostly fairly recent set, uh, uh, rocks, but there are some uh, slightly older ones, some more uh, Mesozoic ones. And then we've got this uh, odd little chain of islands um, to the uh, west of the main island. Okay, let's think about some of the questions that I've asked, as well as um, this diagram. This is a cross-section uh, between points X and points Y on the map. Uh, you can see I've marked on the location of some of these uh, places that are marked on the map. And what this cross-section shows us is the depth of earthquake foci. So we can see the distribution of earthquakes in this area. Now, it might look a bit messy at the start, but we can start to unpick this a little. Okay. First set of questions really are all about uh, this cross-section. First of all, can you describe the distribution of earthquake foci? What's actually going on there? Can we pick out some patterns? I'd then like you to draw uh, and label a line to show the position of where this Indian uh, oceanic plate is. Where's the top of it? Now, as I said, we're taking this a stage further. We normally think about um, convergent plate margins as being zones of compression but we do see some tension uh, in the oceanic crust. As it starts to bend uh, to be subducted, we're going to see some tension earthquakes. 
where are they on the on this cross section? As well as tension earthquakes, we're going to get some magmatic earthquakes. Uh, a subduction zone is going to make magma. Okay, uh, when that magma moves, it's going to create earthquakes. Where are they? And then finally, for this diagram, can you calculate the angle of inclination? Uh, how steeply is this plate being subducted? Okay, if you draw a curved line uh, to answer question two a, draw a tangent on that. Uh, to work out uh, the angle. The second questions then uh, relate to the geological map, and I've given you a bit of extra information here. Um, for example, on uh, Sibirut, the highest point on that island is 200 meters above sea level. On Sumatra itself, it's 3,800 meters above sea level. If we look at the shape of this island. Um, it is affected by the plate boundary. How? What's going on there? We also have this chain of islands running from uh, Similu in the north to Engano in the south. How are they related to the plate boundary? What's going on there? Okay, this will be a good place to press pause. Have a go at the questions. Uh, on your uh, handouts, uh, see what you come up with, and we'll be back in a moment uh, with some answers. Okay, let's see what we've come up with. So our first set of questions was about this cross-section. I see to describe the distribution of earthquake foci. Well, if we look at this, the majority of them are less than 100 kilometers deep. Uh, most of them are uh, in a linear, uh, uh, in alignment, should I say, uh, between uh, Sibra Island and the Sumatran Fault. Okay, there are those some um, uh, they're progressively getting deeper. There are also also, some other ones uh, at shallow depth to the uh, east of the Sunda Trench uh, and underneath the island of Sumatra also. Okay, I ask you to draw and label a line show where the top of the uh, subducted in, uh, Indian plate is. And also the fact that it bends before it subducts. And where this magma, magma is. Okay. The red line here represents where I think the top of this plate is. Um, you'll see it's not quite a straight line I've drawn. Okay, you could have drawn a straight line on that. That's fine. Okay, um, your line should start at the Sunda Trench. If it doesn't, um, that's not quite correct. Um, and it should then have the bulk of those um, earthquake foci below the top of the plate. Most earthquakes actually happen within. The oceanic plate. Um, these earthquakes here to the um, uh, west of the Sunda Trench, these are the tensional earthquakes. This is where the plate's starting to, uh, to be deformed as it bends to be pushed down the subduction zone. The earthquakes here under Sumatra, that's where the magma is. Remember the magma will only start uh, being generated once the plate goes 80 to 100 kilometers below the surface. So it's the earthquakes above that that are going to be magmatic. Okay, let's look how we work out the uh, the angle here. Uh, if you draw a, a tangent uh, or a straight line, uh, something like that, okay, um, we can then work it out. Uh, the tan is the opposite of the adjacent. Um, 100 kilometers over 325, I get that to about 0 0.31, which gives me an angle of just over 17 degrees. Okay, let's look at the geological map. Uh, I asked how the shape of Sumatra is affected by the plate boundary. Clearly, it's parallel to it. We've got a, a chain of, uh, of these high mountains. 
uh, which are going to be full mountains, where they're going to be volcanic as well, um, uh, running along the Sumatran Fault there, possibly a thrust fault pushing the rocks up. Um, we also have uh, just the, this elongated shape. Um, it must be related to that plate boundary. Uh, as these mountains are pushed up, we'll perhaps have erosion off those, depositing these uh, more recent sediments um, in the area around the, the high peaks and the volcanoes. This little chain of islands is, is an interesting one. Uh, they're very low uh, islands. They're also made of very recent material. Um, this is a new idea. Uh, these are part of what we call the accretionary wedge. This is the oceanic sediment that gets scraped off the oceanic crust at subduction. It gets um, piled up uh, on the continents. It's one of the ways the continents grow um, as a result of plate tectonic activity. These sediments then get pushed up a little bit as well by the compressive action of uh, the plate movement. So we get a whole chain of these barrier islands off the coast, again, parallel uh, to the, um, the plate boundary. Okay. It may be worth looking up at, uh, a little. It's called an accretionary wedge uh, and is one of the new uh, aspects for ALA. Okay, as we look at uh, our, an Indonesian volcano, um, we can start thinking about our conclusions in, in, in Indonesia, obviously. The plate boundary uh, in Sumatra clearly has an influence on uh, the geography, on the shape of uh, the islands, on the formation of these islands. In addition to that, it creates uh, a multi-hazard environment. Indonesia suffers pretty much from every type of geohazard that there is. Uh, volcanoes, earthquakes, tsunamis, mass movements, mud volcanoes, the lot. And that's as a direct result of this plate tectonic setting. The fact we have this oceanic continental convergent margin uh, along pretty much the whole of uh, the island chain that makes up the country of Indonesia. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, we'll have a go at a study task related to this as well. I'll see you then.